Hello, and welcome to my podcast. My name is Peter Doherty. I'm a Catholic priest and a psychologist who integrates my training in psychology and scripture studies to help understand the Gospels from a psychological perspective and seek out new pastoral teachings for Christians in these modern times. My podcasts are about 7 to 10 minutes in length, where I share insights and reflections that I hope will be useful to you. Please don't hesitate to contact me with questions or comments. Love to hear from you. Today's podcast is from John, chapter 6, verse 1 to 15. This gospel will be read in churches July 28, 2024. John describes the miracle of Jesus feeding a large group of followers. John indicates 5,000 men. We don't know how many women or children. I suggest there might be some exaggeration here. Many theologians suggest that the miracle here was not the creation of food, but rather Jesus inspired the people to share their food. It's very unlikely that people would leave home and go into a deserted place without packing a lunch. However, it's only a theory, so feel free to accept or reject it. Personally, I'm drawn to the theory because making food for the people is great, but teaching them to the point where they are are inspired to share their food suggests a deeper miracle. In fairness, though, the first miracle that Jesus performed was to make wine at a wedding feast, so making food would not be unexpected. Although Jesus knew what he was going to do, he still asks Philip to give him an opinion of what could be done. It's a great teaching tool where the teacher highlights the student's understanding before the teaching and then showing the student what could be the result. Philip answers as expected. He knew that, as it stands, feeding the multitude was an impossible task. The disciple Andrew chimes in and points out that a boy does have some food. But again, he saw the situation with an impossible solution. Jesus is able to change how they see the problem when he does feed the huge crowd. Jesus not only feeds the whole crowd till they are full, but there are 12 baskets left over. The number 12 was not accidental, as the number was significant to the Israelites, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel. The people recognized that a miracle happened, and their response is to make him a king. Jesus, of course, was much more than an earthly king, but the people were not ready to recognize him as the Messiah. John is making an important point that I want to draw your attention to in this reflection. The point has to do with one's perspective of what Jesus can do and will do in our lives. Our perspectives can either enhance or inhibit the course of our lives. Let me give you some examples in order to illustrate what I mean. My students to share on a scale of 1 to 10 how safe do they feel with 10 being the most safe. I usually get answers ranging from 2 to 10. The question usually leads to a spirited discussion on how our sense of safety impacts our daily life choices. Choices on where we'll live, what we will do, and ultimately our future. Feeling safe is fundamental to our mental health and ability to thrive. When we feel safe, we can focus on higher level needs and personal growth rather than being stuck in survival mode. A sense of safety allows us to be more open, explore new things, and take positive risks. People who feel secure are more likely to try new experiences and engage with others, which is crucial crucial for learning and personality and personal development. All of this from just the one perspective of personal safety. Understandably, in the Gospel, the people's perspective is quite narrow. Even Philip and Andrew don't recognize that Jesus could help the situation. They are quite limited in their perspective. Jesus must make the initiative. The people, as well, also have a rather limited experience and perspective. When they realize that a miracle has taken place, they want to make Jesus a king. From their perspective, that is the only possible option. They fail to recognize that Jesus was so much more. So, what is our perspective on God? How can we describe God, God's role in our own lives? Are we open to allow God to surprise us? When an event or situation does not turn out the way we wanted or expected, are we willing to hold back judgment and explore what God could be directing us to do? Are we open to change and to broaden our perspective of God and his role in us? I want to return to Jesus asking Philip what to do in order to feed the crowd and how it is Andrew who proposes an option. Even Andrew recognizes 
realized that two fish and five barley loaves would not be much of a contribution to solving their food problem. It's noteworthy that Jesus uses the boy's fish and bread as a start. With Jesus' intervention, the two fish and the five barley loaves become enough to feed the huge crowd. I wonder if John is making the point that even though our contribution may be small and appear insignificant, Jesus is nevertheless able to do remarkable things. How many of us feel that our contribution won't matter? It's a drop in the bucket. I've often heard the phrase, what's the use? Let us be reminded of the seemingly trivial events that happen in our life that ultimately change the course of our life. Think of the times that someone said something you needed to hear or was there for you in some small way, seemingly trivial moments that ultimately made a big difference in your life. I suspect you'll be surprised to know that you had an impact on someone else's life that you were not aware of at the time. A gesture may have been minor, but had a substantial impact on someone's life. Sometimes people forget or do not see that they got divine assistance. I'll even go as far as to say that often our failures and losses can be a rich source of personal growth and wisdom. The passage in John, chapter 15, verse 2, uses the example of the pruning of the vines to have them bear more fruit. Perhaps when we are pruned, we ought to spend time reflecting on the lesson. Pruning could ultimately be a blessing. So in conclusion, let us not underestimate our God. Be open to surprises. He was continually surprising his disciples and inviting them to open their minds to possibilities. He is likely doing the same for you. Thank you for listening. I invite you to join me next week when I examine the Gospel of John, who describes Jesus answering the disciples' search for a sign from God so that people can believe in Jesus. First time you've heard my podcast and you are interested in hearing more, I urge you to listen to my podcast listed on the website. Every Sunday, I release a new podcast focusing on the gospel for the following week. I invite you to listen to all the podcasts, and I hope the reflections are useful. The podcast, A Psychologist Looks at Scripture, is found in most platforms that carry podcasts. The podcast is also available on YouTube. Please don't hesitate to leave a review. Feedback from my listeners can help be helpful in the development of the podcast. I would also like to thank my team, Heather patel Doherty and Richu Coulomb, who play an important part in the preparation of this podcast. If you have any questions or concerns, I can be reached by email at peter.dohertyomi at gmail.com. God bless, and I hope you have a great week.